So here we have Melanie King, who is going to talk about her journey. And Melanie has, gosh, Melanie, how long? I've known you since the Y, a long time ago. Yes. Was born. When you, how, now how old was your first so at Kelsey, that time? Kelsey's now seven and she's a baby. So, so it's been that long. Mm -hmm. Yes. And then you were also one of the very first people that ever was in my little, little garage studio yeah. way back when so long ago, <laughs> which if I ever showed you what's in there now, you would probably be like, oh my gosh, it's all full of like welding equipment and all this other <laughs> metal stuff and everything. So it looks nothing like it used to before. And so we're going to talk about your journey, um, about where you were, which I remember still vividly certain, certain <laughs> interactions you and I had um, at that time, and then where you are today. And overall, you, you know, the progress that you've made, but most likely, most, mostly what we want to talk about is how your mindset has changed. Okay. Also to what, you know, your lifestyle was like when you were younger, okay. Mm -hmm. What you were raised with and how that influenced where you wound up and then where you had to go to, to get to the place that you're in now. Okay. So let's talk a little bit. First of all, overall, how much weight have you lost? Um, so I would say around 70 pounds. I went a little bit more, but I was kind of thin and then yeah. I worked on gaining muscle. So 70 pounds on the scale, 70 pounds on the scale. Terrific. Yes. And then at your heaviest, do you remember your weight at your heaviest? So I think when I actually monitored it, it was like 235 ish. Okay. It was above that, but when I started tracking, okay. And how tall are you? I'm about five, seven and a half. Okay. And then you, so your weight now is about one's, uh, 160. 160. Yes. Yeah. Below, you know, in the summer and then winter, I go up a little bit. Okay. Which is a fabulous weight. That's a terrific weight for your height, especially with muscle. Okay. So there's a big difference because I know that we'll talk about some scale weight things and everything like that. But I'm going to go to a picture. Okay, that you had sent me, and we're going to talk about who this person was. Okay, so let's see. We're going to go here to this one. You see that one? Yes, I do. Okay, right. So, <laughs> yeah, and then we'll show we'll show your progress. Okay, we'll show your progress in a moment. But what was your so? This was, you were at this weight. Now, when you got married, before you had your child, were you heavy? I was. I've been heavy most of my life. So, um, so yeah, mm -hmm. plus size most of my life. Where did you grow up? What, what state? In New Jersey. In New Jersey. Okay. What was your family's lifestyle like? What was, you know, some of those contributing factors? Yeah. So basically I had two working parents and had, um, my mom was a teacher. And so my dad, he traveled a lot with pharmaceutical sales. And so mm -hmm. now becoming, having children of my own, I'm like, how did she do it? Because a lot of times he would be gone traveling and she would be working, you know, a full day, have to come home and then have dinner and the whole routine with schoolwork and, you know, things like that. So right. I could see why we ate a lot of fast food because it was fast. Yes. Um, yes. Yeah. And so she did cook but a lot of it was soul food. And so it wasn't like light, healthy meals. Yes. <laughs> you know, it's like the good, you know, mac and cheese and, you know, heavy sauces and. Right. And so stuff like that. Um, if you are cooking, it's going to taste good. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Be yes. Yeah. Okay. So, um, and then, so when you were young, I remember my mother was a working mom and it was not normal. I'm 47. Right. So it was not as common to have a mother that worked full time, you know, and I remember coming home and making a salad, right. I remember coming home, making a salad of Doritos, potato chips, pretzels, right. Wow. And I would take them all from the bag and I put them in my bowl and I'd mix it up and I'd sit down in front of the television and watch like whatever cartoon or whatever, when I would get home, cause I was a latchkey kid, mm -hmm. you know, so I used to come home and eat all that. 
Um, but I would say pretty much overall, my parent, my mom actually did make pretty healthy food. I think, you know, the snacks were the most unhealthiest part of my lifestyle, which to this day, I could say it's still like that. I eat healthy meals, but my snacking is probably what keeps me, you know, yeah, that's probably one of the things. So now when you got married, how old were you when you got married? I was, uh, about to be 25, I believe, or 25, about to be 26. Somewhere. Had you done any harsh diets up to the point of your mar- your wedding? Um, I can't think. I think I gained weight because they had you to gain. Through. I remember my bridesmaids trying to zip up my dress and it wasn't going up quite easily. <laughs> so uh, I would love to say that I was focused up to the wedding day, but I was not. Okay. Um, but I did a lot of dieting prior to that, just growing up, even with my parents and then college, you know, and it came and went. Uh, mm-hmm. Nothing lasted. Nothing lasted. Nothing. What, what types of diets? Just trying to cut back or did you do Weight Watchers or you do anything weight like watchers, that? Weight Watchers, LA mm-hmm. Weight Loss, um, you know, Curves Gym, or if there was like a program that they offered in college, just little things here and there. Um, you know, I think at some point I tried like Atkins and, and low carb diet. Yes. Okay. Sure. So have, was your mom on diets? Was your mom one who dieted? I don't think she um, really pursued anything besides helping me. If I said like, hey, I want to lose weight. So my brother, entire family was pretty weight. Um, right. I think what might have prompted anything um, was going to the doctors and then saying, hey, the kids are overweight, you know, oh, okay. or trying yeah. something, but nothing long lasting. I, I don't think, I think to be honest, African American community is, um, very used to having heavier people seeing yeah you know okay. larger people so I don't think it was like an image thing for sure I think it was more someone said hey they're overweight and need to lose weight yes yes so we're gonna fast forward to a little bit of a progress picture now of you okay so let's go from there then we get to here now everybody sees this picture and they are always of course you may not hear this because you're on the picture right but when i show this to people they'll be like oh my god how'd she get all those muscles right so they're always very astonished about that um that you lost the weight not only but you didn't just get flabby okay so there was a shift and it was a struggle with you in the beginning so Uh, not to say you were one of the problem children, but you were one of the problem children. Okay. (laughs) Because mentally you had such a hard time wrapping your head around the process. So, and now you had your second who was a little baby. Okay. Mm -hmm. In the little car seat. Okay. So tell us about that mental struggle that you had from here to here. Because people see that they're like, how long did that take? And I said, oh, that took about 18 months from that. Yes. It took about 18 months, but they don't know that before that it took years for you to get to the point that it took 18 months right. mentally. Right. Okay. So tell us about that up and down mindset battle. Um, so I think a lot of us have goals and we think it's easy to accomplish certain goals or they should be accomplished in a certain amount of time. Um, and so even in this before and after, that wasn't my lowest weight. I went a little bit more. Um, I didn't look good when I was thinner, but I just, I kept pushing myself because in my head, I had this idea of what a healthy weight should look like and what it should be and what, um, I guess, goal. goal. Yeah. And I learned um, during this process that it doesn't come easy. And you have to just push through hard moments. And so I think when I first started uh, in the left or the before picture, um, my son was three months old. That's my last child. And I was just finally tired. I was like, okay, I've done this. How many times started this journey? How many times I just can't keep doing it. I have to actually keep pushing and get through it. But I believe the difference. And I know the difference was really having you, having a support system, having people who are like, you have to show up to these appointments. What are you eating, et cetera, et cetera. Um, I didn't do that before. I wasn't committed. Um, And so the 18 month process was a lot of um, restarts. I had plateaus during that process. Yeah. But I kept going. I think that's the part that was different. It wasn't like, well, I failed. I gained back the weight. I'll just live how I was going before. It was like, all right, I have to keep going. And so 
that it's helpful to have a person who you can keep going with, which was you. Um, and then someone who's telling you the opposite of what your mind is telling you. So I am a very, uh, uh, yeah. I will beat myself up in my head and I will create lots of stories in my head about why I can't do something. Um, mm -hmm. And I am more aware of it now. So I won't say I don't do it now, but I realize now when I'm making these excuses to overwhelm myself, to just paralyze myself, to not start something. And so uh, just being more aware of just the basic low self-esteem self-talk that I'm doing to myself, uh, mm -hmm. it, that awareness in itself helps me push through and keep moving when I don't want to. Yes, that, that is huge. I would say one of the ultimate success factors for people is having this amount of rigor rigorous honesty with themselves. Um, being able to identify when they are making those excuses or finding a way to give them an out or, you know, finding an opportunity to say, oh, I can't this to do this today. Um, all of those little things, and they're very subtle, but they're huge compounding negative effects if you don't learn to get a grasp of them. Um, that, that, is, that is one of the key things I would say definitely that I notice when people who ultimately make the switch, like you have made the switch, you will never go back to that person on the left, ever, ever. You're, 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 the way you operate and the way you live life is completely different. Um, some people get to your point and they teeter-totter and they, they had lost the weight, but I know it's not quite authentic. It's not really cemented in. Um, they still do certain things or they have done drastic things to get themselves to this point. Now, to get to this point, what would you say your lowest calorie intake was daily? I know it was not below 1,600 calories. That is huge, Melanie. Do you know how many people resort to those 1,200 calorie yeah. diets? Okay. No. I mean, if you weigh 120 pounds, maybe 1200 calories. Okay. But for people who are in the 200 pound range, eating 1200 calories is unsustainable, which is one of the main reasons why they fail. So, and also too, yes, eating 1600 being the lowest. Okay. You had the opportunity to build muscle as you were losing fat. Okay. Huge, huge opportunity. And yes, you did a lot of weight training. Mm -hmm. Okay. You learned how to lift because you really weren't a lifter before. Okay. I think what, yeah. And I think too, um, what people, people think, oh, you must be always in the gym. And I would have to say consistently, I was no more than four times a week. So it was three on a regular basis, four, if I could do it because I yes. had two kids. And so it was like, they were in preschool three half days out of the week. I had to squeeze it in when I had childcare. Um, and then maybe on the weekend, but yes. it was diet, a lot of diet. And then just having in that one hour, a really good workout. Yes. And you need, you need time to rest your body. The six day a week workout, um, philosophy often shoots people in the foot. Um, your body needs time to rest. And during that rest time, that's when muscles grow. Um, this is I mean, one thing which you know now, but, um, a lot of people don't realize when they're working out that process in the gym is not the process that builds muscle. That's what breaks down muscle. Okay. And then remember when you had to get your protein intake in, how many grams of protein do you eat a day? <laughs> when I'm measuring, I'm, I'm aiming for 160. I'm probably getting like 145, 150. It's really hard for me still knowing I should. Um, yes. Yeah. So pretty much that if I'm, if I'm really on point and on days where I'm not on point, it's like 130, um, you know? Yeah. Now, do you remember when you first started trying to count those grams. Uh, do you remember how much, do you remember it being a struggle for you to get even up to 120 grams? Yes. It's yeah. always, I think it was all, and it's so funny for someone who felt like they always over eight, like how hard it was for me to get protein in. And it was because <laughs> I was filling up on all the other crap. <laughs> yeah. You're overeating the wrong stuff. Yes. Yeah. Whenever, yeah. Getting 160 grams of protein in that is challenging. Yes. But for your weight, 160 pounds, that's about where you need to be. So to maintain your amount of lean mass that yes, eating pretty much your goal body weight and protein. Okay. So to be able to do that. And then I remember at one time you had done, what was that little thing? Oh, the 21 day fix. Do you remember that? Oh yes, I do. <laughs> I do. I forgot about that. But you know mm -hmm. what? One thing that's good about certain things, it just, it makes you aware of how you eat. And right. like, I realized that I have to be very intentional and in preparing meals for myself throughout the week. So 
you know, if I'm that person that's always in a rush in the morning, which it is with getting kids up for school and ready to go, I need to have these protein filled breakfasts that are easy to grab and go. And so, or lunches as well, yes. I'm sending out. And so, so with things like that, where they make you measure, like portion out a certain yeah. of food, uh, it just makes you aware of like, oh, I'm constantly grabbing for like the easy carb food as opposed to a protein that I need to make sure is cooked ahead of time or, you know, things like that. So what's your favorite um, protein breakfast? What's something that you're like, this I can do consistently, very easy. It's something I can always fall back on. That's easy for me to have prepared. Okay. So there's two things. I do have um, a light and fit Greek yogurt that I use because mm-hmm. it's like 12 grams of protein. It's not super high in carbohydrates, but it also doesn't have fat in it. So I can kind of control how much fat I'm adding to that. Um, and I've been blending that in with protein powder. So I have almond milk, uh, Greek yogurt that I add in just a small container and then whatever protein powder I like. And that just gives me like 30 to 40 grams right there. Um, no, is that, that made as a smoothie or is that made like a as a bowl, as a smoothie? As a okay. smoothie. And just yeah. blend it up with some frozen spinach or some vegetables. Mm-hmm. You can add fruit to it. If you want some flavoring, or if you get chocolate, you can add peanut butter or peanut, mm-hmm. butter, peanut butter. So that's, that's like an easy go-to that I usually have yogurt in my fridge and protein powder in the pantry. Um, I do also sometimes make like, uh, egg muffins or frittata ahead of time that I just have it cut up. And so mm-hmm. I can kind of microwave that and have an English muffin or something like that with it. Another okay. grab and go. So there's two things. I'm going to switch this one. Now we're going to go to this one. The oh. huge difference. Oh <laughs> my word. Yeah. So hence the protein. Okay. Hence the protein. You cannot, okay, get back development, muscle development, glute development without enough protein and enough food, okay, Mm -hmm. and enough food. So you were able to lose weight at eating a reasonable amount of calories, actually learning how to eat. So you never were really quite starving. You were actually felt quite full because you were getting your protein in on a consistent basis, okay? But from here to here, again, a lot of people are always surprised. They're like, oh my gosh, you know, look at her skin. Like she Mm -hmm. didn't have flabby skin. Now, part of that is genetics. Part of that is ethnicity, okay? Um, But part of that, a big uh, is you, okay? Weight training, Mm -hmm. okay? And building muscle, okay? This underneath here, these are lats, okay? If you don't have lats there, then you have bra bra flab. It's like hanging over your bra, right? But you have lats and you have back development. You have glute development. When you look at this, what is your first thought? (laughs) Did you not see my face? (laughs) (laughs) Uh, The one. Oh, I distinctly remember buying that bathing suit in a small size. Uh um, And getting to that, I had to have been to that point where I was like, this is it. I can't do this anymore. And I took that picture, which I probably did not look at <laughs> for like a year and a half. <laughs> Cause it's just, it was just bad. And I, it's not even about being a bigger person. It was just that I got myself to that point where yeah. I didn't care. Um, and that just shows you, I didn't care about myself. I didn't respect myself to this, to the after picture where I was investing in my in myself. Um, I was taking the time and the money and the effort to prepare foods, um, it's a whole combination of setting myself up so I could be successful. Mm-hmm. And I was investing in myself because I, was, I felt like I was worth it. Now I feel like my money is worth it to put into the foods and into the gym membership. Um, and so uh, once you start investing money in something, you start becoming more serious about it. Hopefully mm-hmm. you become more serious about it because it's taking time. It's yes. taking the money you're working for. Um, and then you realize you're worth the value. Uh, you know, I had to set aside that hour for myself. Um, and so it's more than just weight loss. I think once I go into that gym, it's like, all right, make the most out of it. And I yes. just get comfortable. I have yeah. to push myself, um, within limits, but I make sure to go up if I can increase reps or the amount I lift. Um, I just want to make sure I'm getting the best out of my workouts. Now, let me ask you, what does your husband say to you about your changes? I mean, he's proud of me. Um, mm-hmm. I think he never saw me as like an overweight big person. He just loved me the way I was mm-hmm. before. Um, 
And so he was always a champion supporting me with these <laughs> different endeavors over time. <laughs> but I think he does enjoy the after body, obviously. I think he's very proud of me. Um, I think he's kind of shocked that I did it. I'm not like he didn't believe I couldn't do it, but I don't think he would have predicted this after photo. Yeah. Well, a lot of people, I mean, because it is, it's a very big change because you have to change everything. And I think that's one thing that people don't realize is that they want the change. Okay. They like the idea of going, can you hear, are you still there? Okay. They, they, they want the change. They like the idea of looking different. They, they're in love with the idea of this change. But along with that comes a permanent lifestyle change where before you didn't work out three days a week, before you weren't eating 160 grams of protein consistently, before you weren't meal prepping, before you weren't focusing on these things, before you didn't limit, um, you know, all those extra foods, the cookies, the cakes, the candies, the ice creams, right? All of those things, there was no limitation. So now there is a change that has to come if you want that result on the right. So people can't commit unless they want to actually commit to the whole entire process. And when you get to that journey, when you get to this end point, it's not like you can say, oh, okay, I can relax. Because if you relax, right, it goes back the other way, okay? <laughs> now, do you have a degree of body dysmorphia when you look in the mirror? Oh, yes, of course. It's so funny, if some of the pictures that I sent you, I'm like, oh, wow, you know, I have to see the photo of myself. Yeah. To see the difference, because when I look in the mirror, I don't necessarily see a thin person. Um, and it really shows up when I go clothing. Like, yeah, because I, I tend to grab larger sizes. I like when I would go and grab a size eight or a large, cause I feel like I'm bigger and then have to go back and grab a smaller size. Yes. Yeah. So in my head I'm bigger. And then sometimes I take pictures with friends that I see is smaller than me and I'm about the same size and I'm like, Oh, it, but I don't see it until like there's either physical clothing that I'm grabbing or like a picture because otherwise when I look at myself I don't I, I still I don't feel fat I just feel like very I don't know medium I don't know <laughs> very medium <laughs> Yeah. Well, I mean, you handle it well because a lot of people who do lose a lot of weight have some degree of that. Um, but you're doing well because you're not self-sabotaging and trying to lose even more. You're not addicted to the loss process where a lot of people are. They love to see that scale continue to go down. Um, and then they wind up on the other version. And and like you've said before, having an extra 10 pounds on you looks better. Right. Um, when you get too thin, it, it doesn't look as healthy. Okay. So um, and there's no reason most of us are not walking on a fitness stage in any time soon that we have to get to those degrees of extreme low levels of body fat. So we don't need to be there. So, and now, you know, so now that you're at this place, this is another good picture. I want to go to this one because this one I just see in this picture, I see comfort, pride, at ease, confidence, and pure joy. That's what I see. Yes. 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 I think um, I could breathe. Like I mm -hmm. don't have to worry. I think it's hard to take a breath sometimes. I think we're always in this society. We're kind of always going and achieving and I don't know, moving towards something. And I feel like I have to intentionally take a pause and reflect back on what I have accomplished mm -hmm. um, and kind of enjoy it. Um, not just be stagnant, but just have a moment where I'm not just pursuing something just to be pursuing something. Uh, I do like having goals. I still have goals, but I think in this moment, it was just a chance to be with my family and enjoy them and just kind of the benefits of being healthier and being able to move and keep up with my kids. Yes. Um, and that's really what one of, one of my major goals is to be an example for my kids. And so. Yes. And, and that is true because we, we are, you know, our actions speak way louder than our lectures. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I could see that with no, my own no, daughter. Yeah, yeah, I know how it was for me growing up. Like I go back home for the holidays and it's just like, oh my gosh, like I guess I watch my mom fix food. I'm like, this is what you add. And, uh, <laughs> you know, as my kids grab candy and cookies and, and everything else that's there, 
I'm just like, oh gosh, like I can see why I was the way I was. Um, yeah. And yeah. so I don't want that for my kids. Um, yeah. Yeah. So I know. Yeah. I could see even in my own daughter, you know, in Angelina now she like, she spends three nights a week and you know, at nine, she works out at nine 30 at night, nine, nine 30. I can never do that. Cause I'm getting old now. Um, but that's what she does now. Like her, you know, I, that wasn't my lifestyle when I was her age, you know? So when I was her age, I don't know what I was doing. I think I was just on the phone or whatever. Like I wasn't, I, there was, I wasn't lifting weights at a gym and now she comes home. She goes, mom, I did my 155 pound hip thrust, you know? <laughs> yeah. So yes, these habits do carry down. Cause I am sure that she would not be doing that if I was not doing what I'm doing. So now if you had three suggestions to give somebody who was at your before self place, Okay. What would you tell them to focus on when you're in that moment that you have so much going on and it's so hard for you to get it together and they feel like all these, there's so many moving parts and they can't manage to get in the groove. What would you say? Focus on what three things? Um, small changes. I think for me, I, it was a big weight loss journey for me, but I did five pound increments because mm -hmm. it was just too overwhelming to think of how can I get down 60, 70 pounds. So I just focused on, and I even, I think even at one point I was like a half a pound a week, if I can do that, just like, I made it so easily attainable, not easily attainable, but realistic. I yeah. just realized that small changes, small progress was important and to keep doing it. I had to realize this is a lifestyle change. It's not about just trying to look good for you know, a wedding or whatever right. event. Like this is something I need to commit to for life. And so um, I just, I think small changes. That's one. And, a, and support system. Yeah, I, had, I couldn't do this by myself. I didn't know how to eat correctly. I didn't know how to weight train and lift weights correctly. I didn't even know where to start. So if you could have a support system and it was different people. I had you as my trainer and also just to educate me. I had um, friends cheering me on, so that was important. Um, I don't know. I guess for me, I constantly have to reevaluate my my like emotions and mental state too. So my, yeah, my why? Like, why am I doing this? Mm -hmm. um, you know, why am I going after this weight loss? Like, what is the ultimate goal for it? And knowing that why and having it written down somewhere so I can go back to it. But also, why am I binge eating? Why am I negative talking? Like, what are the stressors? Kind of identifying things. A lot of it was emotional. Um, those are the things that mess me up. And so I'm constantly asking myself, why are you doing this habit? Or, you know, whether it's that's an excellent question. Yeah. Because a lot of people are somewhat mindless when they're going through that. Yeah. yeah. Somewhat mindless. That's an excellent. So support system. Um, is huge. That was what number one. What was the other one? Um, small, was, small, small changes, right? Yes, small changes. changes. Focus on the small changes. Don't look for those big scale losses. People hope for that, but it's being making those small changes. Yes. And asking yourself, why are you doing that? Like, especially in that current moment, like when you're about to pick up something and shove it in your mouth, like even at that time, would you ask yourself, what am I doing? Well, before I wasn't. <laughs> uh -huh. And, and um, after after yeah. for sure and mm -hmm. along the way I got more I was more aware of it I think when you're cutting back on calories and you're not able to eat like you want before I wasn't caring I was put if I was hungry or if I wanted this french fries or if I wanted this or that I just ate it um but as you're trying to be more mindful and intentional of how you're eating this as or as much of this as I normally eat because I need right. to be within these boundaries and so after a while, you're like, well, why do I always go for this? Like, okay, it's after seven o'clock. I realize I'm always grabbing this and messing up my day of, you know, healthy eating. Yeah. Um, and you start saying, what's triggering? You start thinking about how can I prevent this the next time? So I made mistakes, but let's set myself up for success the next time. Don't buy it. Don't have it in the house. <laughs> yes. Don't have, for me, it's don't have it in the house. If it's not in the yeah. house. Yeah. Or sometimes I would go out, if I really wanted something, I would go out and buy a single serving of something. Right. Or there's been times where I, you can't buy a single serving. I would take the single serving out. And sometimes I literally would throw out the rest of the bag of something. Cause I'm like, I only want to have this in the house for this one time, but like veggie straws. I can sit there and eat a whole oh. bag of veggie straws in a heartbeat. The whole, not, not the single yeah. serving bag, the, the regular bag. size. They're that addictive. 
you know, so sometimes I do, I'll just, I'll just separate the bag and I'll say, okay, this, the rest is going in the garbage. It's just $2. It's not even really yeah. worth keeping. Well, you, you, you want to breathe. You want to be able to enjoy yourself. I think I was one of those all, all in type people, very like, oh, I can't have this. I can't yeah. do that. I must do this. Um, and when you're that strict without having a little bit of give, it's harder to maintain. And mm -hmm. so I've learned, okay, you know, you've had a bad day you can start over in the morning and not feel defeated for the entire week or, you know, yes. like it just, I think I, I, um, I think people get like hardcore sometimes, um, without giving themselves grace. I had, yes. to I'm not perfect. Um, and it is a process and, um, it is a journey and I'm not going to be perfect and I wouldn't expect this from someone else. So give myself the same amount of grace. That's a good phrase too. I wouldn't expect this from someone else. And you can't be so rigid with food because when you're that rigid, you know, that does lead to disordered eating, mm -hmm. um, binge type eating behaviors. Um, you can't be like that all the time, but asking yourself why and asking your motives, why am I having this is a really good question. Um, because sometimes it's because I really just want it. But sometimes when you peel back the layers, sometimes it's because I had a bad day. It's, it has an emotional reason because this was, you know, I feel like so stressed out. Those are not the reasons that we should give in to food at that time um, because then we're using it as an escape, okay? And that's how we wind up in that emotional eating trap. So, but this is such a fabulous story, Melanie. And as I said before, you will never go back to that other person. And I am sure you will pass this <laughs> legacy of health on to your children, right? I hope so. I think so. Yeah, they, they, they do. They know, they know how they're learning their push-ups. They see me work out every once in a while and they jump <laughs> up and along the side of me. So I'm like, oh, that's a proud mommy moment. <laughs> yes, proud mommy. It's true. It's true. I never thought, you know, Angelina would take up weight training, but here she is. And you know, she, yeah. she loves it. And I, I don't even, you know, hover over her or, you know, I let her have her own journey with it, but you know, she, she'll FaceTime me from the studio and be like, mom, is this how I do such and such? And, mm -hmm. you know, so she'll show me, so it's, it's good to see. And for her, it'll be hopefully part of her lifestyle moving forward as well. But yeah. this is going to be such a huge motivator for people to see, um, especially, you know, the, the, the backside um, before and after, okay? Because people cannot envision that their body can get there. Now, yes, it can. Yes, genetics is a factor for people. So right. that, that is a factor, um, but it's not the whole part. It's about 10%, I would say 15%. Um, how well does somebody's physique turn out afterwards? And also too, you did lose the weight when you were long, younger in your thirties. Are you, are you 40 today? Are you 40 yet? No, I'm 37. 37. 37. Okay. Yeah. So you did lose your weight in your thirties, which was helpful. Um, but, yeah. if, but seriously, you will set yourself up for having a smooth sailing road through perimenopause and menopause when you keep this habit going. I'm so excited. <laughs> I can't wait. <laughs> well it, it comes at you like a freight train <laughs> oh my gosh I think that's how becoming a mom came at me like a freight train you yeah know the stories I, it was a struggle it still it, is it, yeah so it, well that's why God gave me one child that's like yeah. he, he knew me better than I knew myself <laughs> yeah so well thank you so much for sharing this a huge huge uh accomplishments and huge transformation yeah, so thanks. Yes, yeah, so this is people are going to really enjoy this this uh, video and your well, story. Keep showing up, people. Just keep going along. <laughs> yes, keep showing up. That's the key. Yes, yes. keep.